I'm going to start this video by showing you this device operating because normally this is all hidden away inside. I'm not going to put my fingers in there because it does have 3000 volts present. But this is using neon discharge tubes with a mesh in the outside to generate ozone. It's an ozone generator, but a very unusual one. OK, watch your eyes. It is about to get very bright. So here's the unit in bright light. These are the Corona discharge generators. And I think you can still see the odd glimmer of neon. It's very, very stylish. But anyway, let me zoom out and show you the whole of the unit. I've unplugged it now because I'm going to be sticking my fingers inside it. Now, it's interesting that I bought this secondhand off eBay. It was quite an odd looking unit I'd not come across before. It's an Italian unit. And it's the simplest type. It's got the high voltage transformer with a, a multi-tap primary, which has got the zero volt here, and then you can either switch it to 230 or 133 volts. It's not that critical because it's uh, got a good generous voltage margin. On the bottom with these silicone leads, we've got uh, zero and 2850 volt. And I have tested and uh, did not get a connection between the primary and secondary. One more. I'm just going to double check that. Yep, double checked. It's not a, a grounded end, it is strictly a completely isolated high voltage winding. And when this arrived, and this is so annoying, the box was rattling really, and something heavy was moving inside. It was the transformer, all its mountings. I was going to, I would say they'd been smashed off, but every single nut was missing that holds this transformer on, and um, there were none in the box that it was shipped in. So the seller must have sent this. Knowing that there's something heavy rattling around inside, they probably didn't know what was inside. But I'm very glad that it's come through postage without smashing these tubes because these are quite a special bit. Now, if we lift the lid up onto it, this is the actual unit. And it's interesting to note, I'll just focus down onto this. So I'll focus onto that. It's interesting to note that there's no fan. Um, it's literally just the back panel has a big hole to allow air to enter. And then it's got uh, this louvre at the bottom, but there's nothing to actually push air through, which is very strange. It's not an efficient way of doing things. I mean, it does create a level of ozone in the room, but a fan to actually push air in would have actually been beneficial here because it's not like there's even hot air is going to cause convection currents. Uh, it's very strange way of doing this, a very inefficient way of doing this, particularly with these small slots. They have gone all in. Well, let me get the power analysis equipment up here. They've gone all in on the indicators here, the little neon indicators. So if I plug this in again, I've got a super long cable here. Um, and actually, I'll change the lighting again, just to show you um, what uh, power is being drawn and also the appearance of the unit in the front. I'll just do that now. So look how stylish this looks. I mean, it's not the camera is doing it justice, but you can actually see through the grill in the front. You can see the sparkling and to be fair, I can smell the ozone. There is a blue neon indicator in the switch. There's also a little green indicator down here, which is dyed because uh, it's one of those super tiny indicators. Um, and the green, well, I, the blue is also normally short lived, but um, that's a disappointment. The little green lights off. It's it's taken something from, but it doesn't really matter because that looks great in its own right. The power consumption is five watts per factor is 0.6, which I'd kind of expect. It is just a transformer current, 32 milliamps, uh, but five watts is pretty acceptable for something like this. It's not really going to make a huge impact on your electricity bill, but it is going to have that sanitizing effect. OK, watch your eyes again. The bright, the well, the brightness is about to return. So looking at this closer, I have to say that it's very much up to what I expect from Italian designs. Very stylish, but the manufacturing quality is not the best. However, it's quite an interest construction. The way the transformer's mounted down with these chowed out holes, I don't know if they've maybe had the plate pre-drilled and then they've used a different transformer, but it's just nothing quite is right. And that's why the plastic has broken in the, in the handling before it, before it even got shipped to me. The, this construction, though, is very interesting.
They've got one terminal coming to a bit of heat shrink and going to either end of these tubes, which look as though they're custom made. Now, if I open one of these clips, these brackets, am I going to be able to just open it? I think I'm going to have to use a screwdriver to prise this open. But these clips are the type that just basically unlatch like that to release the tube. I'm going to have to release both tubes. Watch me break it. Ugh. Here is one of the tubes. So the stainless steel mesh comes off and inside is, that is really interesting. This looks very custom. So they have the pinch seal down here. Let's get a bit closer to this. They've got the little pinch seal and it's got a single wire coming out onto this. Basically, it's a piece of stainless steel that has been wrapped, presumably stainless steel, and then spot welded there. And what's holding it in place here is just the fact this is conical. It's going in um, to a modest depth to actually hold that in position. This is very strange. I've never seen one like this before. And for extra dielectric separation, they've clearly wrapped a bit of tape around it and filled it with resin because you can see this a seam of where the tape was wrapped around it or whatever sleeve they used. And the mounting for these it, and connection is also odd because the other connection, these are just standard clip down clips. And they have, for one connection, they've just trapped the other end of the wire against the exterior mesh because this, is this spot weld as well? Or is this loose? It's loose. It's just basically a piece of stainless steel mesh that has been wrapped around a mandrel and then um, just shoved over that and then clipped in. And the way they've made the connection is interesting because uh, this wire is just pinned against the mesh and then they've got literally, they've had a little loop of wire down here that is touching against that um, and it just bridges these two. They've put a loop of wire around and twisted it so when you put the second tube in, like this, uh, all that happens is that it just pinches against that wire. I mean, there's not much current involved in this. It's super low current. I would say the copper losses and the iron losses in the transformer are higher than the actual energy required to generate the ozone. But this is it. That's the whole construction. Just clip this down and that's it in. Uh, very neat. Here's a little uh, dead green indicator. It's got a resistor here. And then it's got the indicator with a tiny, is that like, oh, oh, you know what? I see why it's not working. I think the broken glass inside that is the clue as to why that's not working. Somehow the neon has smashed in here. Wow. This thing has been thrown from a great height probably, but that's okay because uh, it has survived. The tubes have survived. That's the main thing for me. Righty, okay, now we're going to the theory. If you've seen all my videos about ozone before, you'll know about the corona discharge on the surface here and how it breaks oxygen apart. But if you still want to watch, let's take a look at the theory. Begin the theory. So here is the incoming supply to the transformer. So that could be 120 volt or it could be 240 volt. It, you can choose that tap to, to select zero volt. 240. And that's the 121 there. And uh, that is coupled across to a very high number of turns to give 3 kV out, roughly. That goes out to uh, an electrode. Normally, a dielectric barrier involves a insulating layer. Imagine this is a piece of glass. So we'll put little hatch patterns across it like glass. And then there's an electrode on both sides. And because the high voltage is applied across that, it wants to spark across, but it can't because there's that insulator between. So what happens is you get capacitive coupling between these two plates and you end up with lots and lots of tiny little sparks. Well, let's make them, let's make them more appropriate color. I would do purple, but pink is probably the closest we're going to get to a nice bright color. And it manifests itself as a purple glow. If that wasn't filled with neon. If it was just the metal plate inside, that would have been a lovely purple glow over that. But instead, it was swamped out by the orange because what they've done here is instead of having basically a metal plate on one side of this, they've coupled it 
through neon gas. So that's those little tendrils of uh, light that you saw dancing around inside were through the neon. And they were just basically mating capacitively to the inside of the tube. And then the mesh on the outside, that's the stainless steel mesh here. I'll just draw it as lots of zigzaggy bits because it is a mesh. That's the bit on the outside. And it's the area between the glass tube and the mesh that you get that corona discharge as... Molecules of oxygen, that's O2, so there's the two atoms creating a molecule, um, O2. As they pass through it, they get broken apart into individual atoms of oxygen. And some of them combine as an unstable triplet of oxygen, which is O3, which is ozone, and it's a very strong oxidizer. It stinks of bleachiness. You, it's a very distinctive smell. That's how it gets its name, ozium, from ozine, from a, a Greek word, I think, to smell. It's a very strong smelling gas. But it also creates loads of other things, like it splits everything apart. You'll get OH and you'll get nitrous oxide. And oh, is that one or two? I'm, I'm not really sure. But you end up with a whole chemistry because what happens in this corona discharge is it really is it's splitting molecules apart into their separate atoms in the air but the ones that combine as O3 are the most notable for the smell and when they go out into a room they have a strong sterilizing effect and they also destroy organic odor components in the air and they kill they kill viruses they kill bacteria mold everything gets damaged but the level of ozone it's not something that's safe to breathe there is a there is a basic rule, if you can smell ozone, there's too much. It's not something you should be breathing in a lot. But in rooms where it's just added at trace levels, and I'm not sure what this unit was for. Maybe it was for getting rid of smells in toilets. Maybe it was for use in a factory where that hint of ozone was added to the air to prolong the life of food and sanitise surfaces. But um, the other option is that maybe it was used in a, a cold room or something like that, where... For limited human exposure, it was just keeping everything sterile inside it. The other option is, of course, to just run them at night. But that's it. It's a neat unit. It's a very neat unit. Very uh, stylish. I do feel that the addition of the fan, noting that the fan has to blow air in and not pull ozone across itself, otherwise it corrodes, uh, the addition of the uh, fan would have just made this much more efficient. But uh, here we have it. It's quite a nice unit. It's the... Uh, Eurozone premium, but it's a much older mod, mod model because uh, they still sell them apparently. But the modern ones look somewhat more stylish. They've got a more refined custom case with lots of custom punching of the the louvers on it. I wonder what circuitry they use inside now. But anyway, that's it. The inside of the Eurozone premium O3 ozone generator. It's very interesting.